Haha, <laughs> my guy to a good mesh. Let me have a deep sip before. This is um, something that, yeah, I try to come up with uh, over the years. Um, however, if you have something uh, you want to add here, um, please feel free to leave me a comment, send me a mail, because I would like this guy to become better over time. So this is basically what um, I have experienced. The well-shapedness of your elements plays an important role, especially um, if you think of convergence. Um, not so much accuracy, yeah, also accuracy, but convergence can be a huge deal in metal forming. So always check your mesh that you have not perfectly um, square-like or hex-like elements uh, or cube-like elements, but this definitely helps, especially if we talk about explicit simulation. We'll do this in the seventh tutorial and there we will talk about well-shapedness in more detail. We talked about this already, hexahedral uh, elements is the go-to element in three-dimensional um, analysis for a couple of reasons. We talked about this uh, when comparing it to the hex elements. Um, second, sorry, second order reduced integration elements can be used for certain types of problems. If you know that you are dealing with such a problem, you should use it because then you get very accurate results. However, Knowing and understanding when you have such such a type of problem is, I would say, quite difficult even for me. So usually start with the defo default elements, see if you have problems and think about what you have learned in this tutorial and then check, yeah, okay, I see that and this and that problem. So I know maybe changing to a different element type might be a good uh, action. So second order fully in, um, integrated elements are good at stress concentrations and um, the, to capture the severe gradients. But, and I mean, you only do this if you don't want to spend a lot of elements in this region. So however you say at finite strains, so at large deformations um, for nearly incompressible materials. So remember, the von Mises type of plasticity is almost um, it's, it's also incompressible. Um, we always tell that this type of plasticity occurs at zero, um, at, at a constant volume. So at zero constant loss or zero constant uh, volume, sorry, at zero volume loss and zero volume gain. So this is per, de per definition also incompressible. So um, this is basically the main reason why these type of elements are rarely used um, in metal forming analysis. So this, this guide, if you do some other stuff than metal forming, this guide might look a little different, but since we're talking about metal forming, um, I'll, I'll so to say structure this guide to assist you in the case of a forming simulation. So um, first order um, quads and hex elements, good for problems involving large, large distortions. Um, and if the mass distortion, which is not always directly linked to large um, overall deformations, um, but if that also occurs, uh, go for reduced integration. So this, the, the reduced integration first order element is the default in Abacus, and it's, it's actually the best choice in many cases for, for us as metal forming uh, simulators, because you often have large uh, strains and severe mesh distortion because it's almost in complex contact condition, uh, this occurs so quickly and so easily and then only this element can yeah, ensure proper convergence and even these, uh, this type of element will fail quite often. This is something that you will quickly experience when doing a lot of simulation. Um, problem involving bending and large distortion, um, you usually say um, rather than go for, um, uh, instead of going for an incompatible element, 
go for a fine mesh of first order reduced integration, at least four elements through the thickness. Um, uh, thickness. And yes, you. this is one of the times where you say just put in more elements. It will definitely benefit the convergence and the accuracy of your simulation. Um, however, maybe I want to uh, directly come to, to this point here. Um, people tend to refine everything. They see something, oh, it doesn't work. Uh, before my boss gets angry, I just uh, run a simulation uh, over the weekend with a 10 times as uh, dense mesh. That helps, but costs you three days. So by Monday, the simulation uh, won't be finished. Um, so rather think, do smart meshing. Think about where do I need um, more elements? Maybe I need a different type of element in this region, a higher order or um, full integration, depending on the problem. So at stress concentrations, at high gradients, at high geometric curvature, there you should put your elements. Um, we talked about biasing in the first tutorial. So this is definitely a good tool to really only put elements in this region. And if you, we will later talk about partitioning also. This will even more help you to concentrate the fine mesh density at these areas. Um, um, one more thing on hybrid elements, um, they should or must be used for fully incompressible um, materials and also it has become more common for nearly incompressible materials. Um, don't get confused here, we talked about plasticity before, the, because most of the linear elastoplastic material models um, or linear elasto, non-linear plastic material models, because they are elastic plastic, because of the elastic part, um, they are not incompressible. Only, so to say, the van Mises plasticity that occurs later on makes them incompressible. But you would you use hybrid elements for stuff where you know right from the beginning it will be incompressible. Um, so don't mix this up. Uh, we talked about incompatible. Can, can give very accurate results um, if you have bending and contact including, but usually not severe uh, distortion and strains. Um, yeah, the general density should be at a reasonable level. We talked about this and for some reason, no, I did this on purpose. Um, this is the most, whoop, this looks like a ice cone now. This sentence is very, very important. And I can tell you I've faced hundreds, uh, if not even a uh, couple of dozens um, uh, of problems where people just didn't do this. They came to me asking, like, what can I do? I said, like, do you already know that the mesh you're using is not a cause of error? Because they just didn't, simply didn't perform a mesh element analysis, so a convergence analysis of element and density. So only by comparing different element types and different densities, you can um, get con confident, gain confidence in your results. So it's a very cru crucial thing to do and people, because, oh yeah, it works, it shows me some fancy pictures, it doesn't mean that you're as best as you can get using FEM to your result. It's, it's a result and if it compares well to your experiments, feel, feel lucky, uh, be happy about it, uh, start dancing. But if you have um, some difference between your numerical results and your experimental results, this could not mean that your general setup of your numerical model is wrong, but this could simply mean that you did a poor mesh construction or just use the wrong elements for this case because the default element, first order reduced integration hex elements, is not the best element for every application. For many, many yes, but not for everything. So always perform these convergence studies 
and uh, show this, show you have studied and people would say, oh, this is good that you actually compare it because not a lot of people do this. Uh, I can really recommend doing this.